Hello and welcome back. Today I'm wearing Michael's favorite shirt and we're also going to check out my new iPhone 12. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So you guys have probably already seen the iPhone 12 being unboxed a few times already, which is really cool uh, for you, I guess. I have not seen the iPhone 12 unboxed yet, um, but I do have a pretty good idea of what's included because I've been keeping a particularly uh, watchful eye on this product. Ooh, wow, that is actually really tough to open. There we go. And here it is. Check out that nice frontward facing camera. That's really cool. And it's also got an LCD interface here so you can see yourself uh, when you're taking your front side cameras. And of course, it's got a little doorbell here. So if you want to uh, ring your friends for any reason, you can do that. So pretty neat. I'd say this is about on par with uh, most doorbell cameras in terms of design, at least from what I've seen so far. Uh, this is a setup manual, instruction manual. Not really sure, but we don't care because we're not gonna do it anyway. This seems to be some sort of adapter or maybe a mount. I think it's a mount, something like that. We have a nice level. Ooh, that's fancy. I thought it was actually a fuse at first. It's actually, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, we have some more cardboard here. And inside our iPhone box, it actually comes with this really cool adapter. So if you put this up against the wall, uh, you actually get this nice angled effect. So uh, obviously those of you who might need this know exactly what this is for, but this is not something I'm going to need uh, for my house because my iPhone will be exactly laid flat against the wall, assuming the sun doesn't block it. We have some mounting hardware. Okay, here are our headphones. Uh, oh, this is actually the wireless charging, so that's really nice to see. I'm glad they included that. So here are the headphones. You can see that they're still using the 3.5 millimeter jack uh, for each of these, which is kind of weird because the iPhone doesn't even ship with a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack anymore. That's, that's really interesting. So I'm not sure why they did that. I guess we'll have to buy an adapter for $80. And is that all that is in our iPhone box? Oh, there sounds, sounds like there's some beans in here. Let me get some of them beans. There they are. Oh, they're taped down. Wow, that's a really interesting move for Apple to do. They normally don't tape anything down. And that appears to be all. We don't get any sort of stickers, uh, Apple logo stickers for this or nothing. It's kind of a shame, really. Um, and that's pretty much all that comes in the box. So let's go ahead and uh, check out what we got going on around the house. So for those of you that don't remember, this is what the entryway of my house looks like. And we have a Skybell HD camera right there, as well as a Ubiquiti G3 camera there. That's the original UVC G3. And as you approach, uh, you know, you get a pretty good look at this Skybell. Now this looks directly out into the street and uh, can see all the way down my street, which is perfect for all the cars that's going to be capturing here in the future. Uh, well, not the Skybell, the Ubiquiti camera. And it's pretty basic. Um, not really much to it. Uh, I've actually never used it and here's why. Now the reason I don't use the Skybell HD is because it costs $15 a month just for the privilege to enable it. Now I can't even connect it to my Wi-Fi because there's some sort of proprietary app that comes with Alarm.com or one of their service providers that I need to, not necessarily purchase, but I need to subscribe to an account in order to get that application and also connect that uh, Skybell HD to my Wi-Fi. Now this isn't like the common Skybell HD that you would find off the shelf. Like if you were to go to uh, like Home Depot or something, you could actually buy that same model uh, from them and then slap it on there and you could use it. But this particular one, because it came with the house, um, here is a proprietary one that has proprietary drivers, proprietary software. And as far as I can tell, you actually can't hack that software or do any firmware updates. It's pretty locked down. And it doesn't seem like anyone else has actually successfully pulled it off yet. But thankfully, Ubiquiti has come along and finally released their G4 doorbell, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I don't have to worry about paying $15 a month just for the privilege of using that Skybell HD, which is absolutely absurd. Now, I don't know all what is included with the Skybell HD. I'm assuming that $15 a month enables remote access, recording, 
cloud save cloud saves and probably a whole bunch of other things but I, i'm not i'm not a subscription kind of guy i i want to own everything i want to know where all my data is and honestly i don't even know who the skybell's pa uh, parent company is or who they're partner with or who they give that data to it's kind of like putting stuff on google drive you don't really know what google's doing with that and they do actually look at your folders or files whatever you put on there uh so you know it's it's kind of a uh, kind of a risk now with the front doorbell camera it's not too big of a deal because you're just going to be seeing the street and they're not really going to be hearing anything because all the sounds are going to be outside but you know i just don't want that device on my network because i don't really know what it's doing even though i could block it from the internet but i think if i block it from the internet actually i won't be able to use it i think that's actually the case but that's the point. Let's go ahead and get that thing dismounted and then we'll figure out how we can get this mounted uh, to the door. Remember, we're doing this uh, totally clean. Haven't done it before. Haven't seen anyone install this. We're just going for gold here. So we're gonna learn together like we always do. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so a little bit later, we'll talk about why exactly, or other reasons why I don't really like this camera and well, one, I can't even use it, so that's a big problem right there. Um, but we'll talk about some other reasons later while we try and move it. Now, removing is actually really easy, which is something I really like about this. It's very simple. You just unscrew the bottom here and I believe lift up, and there you go. It's off. Uh, it's not, well, I shouldn't say it's not a bad camera. Oh, this is actually a SkyBell uh, Slimline, not a HD. So I think that's the uh, difference. All right, so now that we have it removed, um, there's a previous bracket that holds this to this camera to the wall. Uh, so we'll just see if we can just remove this and hopefully we're good to go. And then of course I have my, uh, these, are, these are actually ethernet cables. Uh, this is an ethernet cable. It's all bunched up here that's providing power. Um, so I think this will work uh, because that will provide enough power and we should be pretty much good to go. So there's gonna be a little learning curve here. Oh boy. Okay, so just kind of taking somewhat of a quick look. Uh, this thing is actually, the holes aren't lined up, which is which is fine. Um, what we'll have to do probably is actually just mount it for now. And then I need to get a different drill bit so I can actually drill through brick. That's not something I own. But we can get it mounted today and uh, I can take care of this later off camera. Uh, I think it'll be fine. The foyer is pretty well protected and honestly, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere with, uh, or it shouldn't go anywhere, uh, even only having one screw uh, supporting it. So uh, I've turned off power to the foyer, which is where we are. So these shouldn't be live, but I'm not gonna touch them anyway because I don't trust myself or anybody for that matter. And uh, let's see if we can get it hooked up. Oh boy. And I just pulled out, <laughs> I just pulled this out. That's not good. Kinda needed that for sure. Pretty sure it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Oh, actually it looks like they have another hole for me right here. So I wonder, looks like I have a bunch of holes actually that they covered up. All right, that should be good. And probably should have read the instruction manual because I don't know which one's positive, which one's negative or anything like that. So now would have been a great time to have read the instruction manual, which is not something I have done, which is going to be a fatal, wow, that's gone forever, which is going to be a fatal mistake on my part. Wow, that's actually really tough to get back in there. All right, that should be good. And the second one. There we go. And I see that it is lighting up, which is interesting, because that means this thing had power the whole time. And it's starting up. Wow. All right, so it says it's ready for setup. Apparently, I didn't turn power off, so I'm glad I didn't electrocute myself or shock myself or do anything. And uh, I guess now I'm gonna have to get it set up, so we'll BRB. All right, so installation was actually pretty easy, but that's really thanks to the fact that I already have our previous system installed on uh, my home here. So that, I don't know, there's really not much to say. The doorbell works, the recording already works. Um, obviously integrating that into the uh, Unify environment was uh, really easy as well, or ecosystem was really easy as well. 
But that's not to say the recording is perfect. So there seems to be an issue with, um, let's say that I come to the front door and I'm trying to like scope it out or whatever. Like I come to the front door and then immediately turn around and leave or come and then immediately come back again. Um, the camera is just not really going to record me coming back again at all. And I sort of accidentally discovered that because I was trying to do a skit for you guys where I steal a package off of my own porch. And that seemed to go very, very poorly. It took several attempts and I still haven't managed to capture myself coming through the front door uh, to steal that package once. So let's take a look at Unify Protect real quick and let me show you, or yeah, let me show you what I, I kind of mean by that. So here is my final attempt before getting frustrated. So this is me here. Um, placing the package outside of the front door basically in preparation. I did trigger the camera unfortunately but hey you know that's just that's just the cost of doing business I suppose. And then uh, I decided to go out my back door so that way there would be a nice time gap of me leaving and walking around the house to approach the front door. Um, so yeah I go around the front door and then here is me actually stealing the package uh, off the porch of off of my porch, so I approach the cam or the package very very sneakily, grab it and very sneakily walk away as if no one saw me, and bam, mission accomplished. Let's all go home, ladies and gentlemen. But there's something missing here. There should be another video with a similar timestamp of two minutes and 21 seconds, but there isn't. Uh, the only other one with a similar timestamp is the front door camera again, the overhead camera from the UVC G3 bullet as recorded twice. Where is my UVCG fork? Oh, there it is. Uh, it's right here. So let's check out this footage. What did it record? It recorded me coming back into the house. Very odd. And guess who else recorded me coming back into the house after just stealing the package off my front door? Oh, it just happened to be the um, UVCG3 camera, the, the bullet camera overhead. So that is really odd. What is going on here? So if we, um, I think I might have scrolled around a little bit. So what, I don't, I really don't understand. So this is my final attempt to show you guys uh, quality here. So we'll just ignore that for now. But I've tried recording this a few times. Here's another attempt. Um, so here's me stealing the package again, but there's no doorbell footage of that. So, you know, again, I approach very sneakily, grab the camera. So this one looks like it might have been successful, but there's a nice four minute gap. Again, it's just, it didn't work. It never actually recorded me as I wanted to be recorded. Um, so that is very strange. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Um, I guess maybe I need to wait a very significant amount of time from placing the package and then actually going and getting it. I'm not sure what that time frame is. Uh, within one to two minutes is definitely not the time frame because, you know, as we just saw that it took me about a minute to two minutes to kind of do the whole thing because I was taking my time. And I never at least, I never successfully captured myself. Now that doesn't mean that something's wrong with the system uh, necessarily because typically like someone from FedEx or UPS or whoever is gonna leave a package there and leave and then, you know, um, not immediately, but I suspect that maybe, you know, some some unknown time, definitely not within the first few minutes, a porch pirate will come by and then take the package. I almost guarantee you that I will capture that, almost. I think the problem here is that there's just, it's just too close from the first recording to the next recording. So that seems kind of weird. And now what's funny about that is I'm not actually recording um, on motion. It's actually recording all of the time. But even when it's doing its live recording and we I review that, I don't see myself ever taking the package off the front porch when reviewing the live uh, feedback, which is really weird. So something must be misconfigured on my end. Thankfully, I'm not a, a reviewer, so we don't have to do that today necessarily. But that does mean that I owe you a follow-up video um, to figure out what's going on there or at least so I can describe it. But I kind of want to do that anyway because I do want to touch on the, some of the differences, maybe not differences necessarily, but I want to touch on uh, some of the different things from the uh, Unify video application versus the Unify uh, Protect application. Now, what about quality? How is that? Well, I'll let you guys be the um, judges of that. 
and I'll just show you a video of me just casually walking into the house uh, from the front door. And uh, yeah, I don't know, tell me what, I guess drop in the comments, tell me what you guys think of that. See if that is uh, something good or not. Let's talk about one of the major reasons why I didn't want to use the SkyBell uh, slimline camera, not the HD as I previously said. But one of the major reasons why is if you can't connect this thing to your Wi-Fi or your alarm.com, it will flash over and over and over again. So someone from the street can look around because all, all the houses in this neighborhood have the same doorbell camera. They'll look around and be like, huh, that one camera is flashing, I wonder why. Well, when it flashes, it's basically broadcasting to the world, anybody on the street, that, hey, I'm not configured, I'm not recording, which is doing a terrible job of letting, or actually it's doing a great job of letting people know that it is um, you know, not set up appropriately and basically saying, hey, come rob, come rob this person, come steal off their porch. So, I tried connecting to this thing via USB and it did not work. I was unable to interface with it at all. So what I ended up doing was taking a piece of electrical tape and taping over the bright ass LEDs that can be seen from all the way across the street. And uh, that was one way, or the only way I could figure out how to um, keep people that were on the street from no noticing that it wasn't configured. Now I tried disabling the Wi-Fi on this thing or you know, unplugging the LEDs, but the LEDs are soldered on the board directly. I tried removing the battery um, to hopefully prevent the LEDs from being powered, um, but I always left it plugged in because that's the only way Like for if someone comes to my door, if they ring the doorbell, that's the only way for us to know that somebody's there. Um, so I tried all sorts of things to disable that uh, LED and it was totally unsuccessful. So good old electric tape, that seemed to do it. And so that was the biggest driving force for wanting to replace this. I was very, very close to getting a separate uh, system set up, but thankfully I caught wind that uh, Unify was actually gonna drop, um, drop the G4 camera because somebody had noticed the picture. There was a camera, a doorbell camera that looked like was included, included with the, the Unify Protect line. Um, so I basically sat on my hands I gained early access eventually, and I tried to buy an early access, but was very unsuccessful, and only just recently got my hands on it and got that two-day shipping, and it was here. So uh, we have it now, and it's been good. This camera is total junk. I will probably throw it in the trash, or actually, I'm gonna recycle it, more than likely, uh, because it can't even be activated, and it's just, it's just garbage, unless you have alarm.com. Or maybe I'll give it to one of my neighbors so they can have a backup camera. I don't know, doesn't matter, I'm getting rid of it. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Look forward to seeing a follow-up of Unify Protect uh, versus Unify Video and the entire camera system because I definitely want to do that now that I have an actual ecosystem going on and we will get more, more into details there. So as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. I am not a crook.